reminded you of life experience you have. Listen, I've, I have played through coaches, GMs getting fired, uh, regimes changing. You know when you go on WebMD and you have a symptom like, oh, my, my fingernail hurts. You go on there, immediately you see, I'm going to die. Right. Right? <laughs> right. This okay. feels a lot like that. Some of the symptoms that are mounting up, you have players not trusting your strategy. You have what felt like being forced to get rid of your OC and DC. Now the most egregious one to me is you start finger pointing post game about what happened. Oh, well, that's not really me because now you're trying to position yourself to say, I need a case to be made for why I keep my job or somebody else loses theirs. And players, an organization, everybody in the building starts to feel that and that's what it reeks of. I feel like you have not fully solidified your expertise yeah, in, in this circumstances. I'm not sure that everybody knows that you played for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I played for the Cleveland Browns with Miles Garrett. You don't get a Miles Garrett unless you have an Andrew Hawkins. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I played... You're welcome, Cleveland. <laughs> this is sacrifice team, for you. You know, that, that put the, the position that the, the organization is in now. But, yeah, we... Mike Pettin... There were times when Mike Pettin, Ray Farmer... I mean, you know, we had a, a constant turnover, yeah. and it felt very, like, a lot of turmoil within the building, and it was, it was predicated simply off of that, where it was, well, whose fault is this? Well, that, 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 I think the common way that is described is we say it feels like a Game of Thrones. And sometimes mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, it has it clearly there is there, there's some level mm -hmm. of disconnect. You've got yeah. the general manager, Howie Roseman, who people praise constantly and generally, I think, has done an excellent job. And then you've got the coach and they, they win a Super Bowl and they change the coach. They go to another Super Bowl a year later. They're, they're firing coordinators. They're taking play calling away. I mean, stuff goes on yeah. in that organization. Yeah, because yeah. <clears throat> cause they take chances. They make moves. They don't sit there and let things fester like other organizations do. They make moves. And there is a culture and a precedent and a standard that the Philadelphia Eagles franchise lives and dies by. And you know what? The players absolutely love it. They absolutely love it. I mean, you want to say that Harry Roseman has generally done excellent? I mean, he's, he's been as good as you possibly can be. Think about all the contract problems that all these other teams have faced. Whether it's the Dallas Cowboys, whether it was the 49ers, whether it was the Cincinnati Bengals, like they're just constantly having contract issues. Oh, we can't afford to pay this receiver and that receiver. Are we gonna pay our quarterback? What are we gonna do? And the Eagles take care of business. They got Devontae Smith and AJ Brown signed like that, like nothing. Nothing. No big deal. They just did it. There, there, was no, there was no issues. A.J. Brown didn't have to sit out. He's not going through the whole turmoil that's going on with the Cincinnati Bengals. T. Higgins isn't, you know, what the heck, what's going on, how he is, what his problem with Cincinnati. They were able to get their one and two wide receivers. Devontae could easily go somewhere else and get paid more money and be featured more. Without a doubt, he is a great wide receiver. He is a number one receiver for a lot of other teams. He is that dude. Make no mistake about it. Don't, don't get lost on just his size. The fact that he's a little bit smaller and skinnier and not as, you know, outgoing and, and verbal. And yet, he wanted to say in Philly, they were able to take care of it. They were able to get Jalen Hurts, sign him to a contract that makes sense in the long term. They didn't have to play any of these other games that we constant, constantly see these other teams do. You see a Jason Kelsey, you saw on the broadcast how much he just loves the Philadelphia Eagles in that franchise and how he really did take it upon himself to do everything he could to get a replacement for his position and, 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 and get someone that will continue to be just a force to be reckoned with. Like that is what the Philadelphia Eagles do. You got players who desperately just don't ever want to leave. Terrell Owens himself has said that that was his favorite place to play in and that the fans were the best out of any of the other teams. He was on some sort of podcast or radio show, and I think it was 49ers based, and they asked him, um, hey, well, who are your favorite fans, the Cowboys or the 49ers? And he's like, honestly, you guys are going to hate this, but it's actually Philly. He goes, they treat me better than anywhere else. So yeah, like that, that's what makes special so, that's what makes Philly so special. And, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's undeniable. You, 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 no actual current player could deny. I know a lot of fans, and all fans always love to hate on each other's fans and say, oh, the Philly fans are the worst, or this, or that, or this. But it's just the Eagles are consistently 
first off, they're one of the the highest valued franchises in in sports, right? That's just like basic, you know, uh, evaluations. They have one of like the top five largest fan bases, and viewership for the Philadelphia Eagles is like top three, top four, right? So it is you're talking about playing for an organization that is one of the most important and valuable franchises in the NFL. Again, it's it's not really up for debate. You just got to look at look at just Google it. Top fan bases in the NFL, most expense, you know, most you know highest value teams in the NFL, um, highest viewership in the NFL, and the Philadelphia Eagles are up there. And the and the players know it, the coaches know it, the city knows it, and something that they take with pride and they want to be there. Right, you have top elite players wanting to play for Philly, wanting to be there. They love the fans. They love the city. It's it's you know you can hear even if we switch sports, you have um, Bryce Harper talking about you know from the Philadelphia Phillies how much he loves Philly, like gets him emotional thinking how much he loves to play for those fans and 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 the city and all that. Like it's just an incredibly passionate city. And you're maybe asking, well, like, what what does it have to do with 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 Sirianni and the struggles? And it's because one of the things that the Philadelphia fans love is that the, they don't they don't just sit there, right? When they think that there is a problem, they make moves. They don't just keep running it back and doing the same thing. They don't do what the Dallas Cowboys do, right? They don't just do the same thing again and again and again and expect different results. They don't do that. It's the definition of insanity. And that's why the Dallas Cowboys haven't been to an NFC Championship game in literally 30 years. It's why the Dallas Cowboys, with Dak Prescott, has the same number of playoff wins and throughout his career that the Eagles have Super Bowl appearances in the last seven years. And, that, and that's what the fans love. That's what the city loves. That's what the players love. They know it's about business. They know that it's a winning culture. Top three, I believe, in, in playoff wins for the last like 20 or so years. 25 years, I think it is, right? I think they're like now right below the Ravens and um, the number one was the New England Patriots who this is during the era of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. So, you know, you know that's, that's hard to get more playoff wins than them. So yeah, you know, this power struggle, if that's what you want to call it, Sirianni, I make no mistake, I, I make no secret about it. I, I do not like Nick Sirianni. I, I do not, even this, uh, you know, what he said here, let um, me see if I can find it. Um, where is it? Yeah, you know, K- uh, Kellen is the offensive coordinator. That makes the calls. Yeah, you know, if you're trying to stir that up, you know, can you overrule him on those? Yeah, I'm the head coach. Like, it's just like a weird thing to say, like, even in that interview. And I don't know exactly how the back and forth went. But just be like, we lost. The play calling ends, you know, starts and ends with me. Yes, he's the o- offensive coordinator, but this is on me. I get the final say, you know, whether you want to say it was a mistake or not, or if he wants to say this is the right call, right? Like either way, you stand by, you take the heat, you are the head coach, whether you want to admit that it was a mistake or whether you want to double down and say, this was the right move. And I stand 100% behind it. It, We didn't get the outcome that we wanted, but we had, you know, uh, Saquon Barkley wide open and all he does is need to catch it. But it's, you know, we, we, I put my players in a position to succeed. I trust them. I trust Saquon would make that play 99% of the time. He just didn't. It just happens. It's football. We're on to the Saints now, right? Like, there's just other ways to do it. And Tyrion's not good at it. He's just, he's just not. Um, and when you have little things like this, that's when it can kind of be a problem. Which is funny because in the past, he's kind of done that to a degree. When there was like a big fight with like A.J. Brown on the sideline. I forget the exact situation. And he tried, he got caught lying essentially. He was like, no, no, everything's fine. And it was like, we have film of you guys. Or, or he was like, I didn't see it. I wasn't there or something. And they're like, well, we, we have film of you being right there and, and having the conversation with them. So Sirianni is, is, has always been kind of goofy like that. And it seems like my interactions with Philadelphia Eagles fans on here seem to be divided on Sirianni. Some people are very high and they're like, well, look how many games he's won and He's been to a Super Bowl and and the playoffs, you know, every year and all that. And and I get that. I do. But I'm just not so sure that that really is all because of like Nick Sirianni's greatness, quite frankly. I, I just I, I, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure what Nick does. I'm, I'm really not. I will always be a fan, always, unless the NFL changes over the years of getting a legit bona fide offensive head coach. That That, that is the way. And you need him to be the offensive. You need him to be the play caller as well. 
He's the one that needs to develop the deep personal relationship with your quarterback. That is the most sustainable and most resilient way to build a franchise. Because let's say Kellen Moore really gets this offense humming. His play calling is electric. His designs are just, his play designs are just like, and his game plans are things that we've never seen. And it's like, oh my God, he's unbelievable. He's going to leave and then get a head coaching job somewhere else. And then you got to start back and find another offensive coordinator, another play caller. You need that guy to be the head coach. Especially if you are going to be a, have a, a, a legitimate quarterback that you need to grow, develop, uh, maximize. And if you're going to be an offensive forward team, you need to do that. And so that, that's why I'm not a fan of Sirianni in that regard, because that's not who he is. That's why teams like the 49ers with Shanahan, McVay with the Rams, Andy Reid, of course, with the Chiefs, Kevin O'Connell with uh, uh, the, the, the uh, Vikings, and uh, Matt LaFleur with the Packers. They have a big advantage having those as the, those guys as their head coach. Those guys are brilliant. Shane Steichen with the Colts. Theoretically, if you knew that this was going to happen this way, you would have been better off letting Sirianni walk and keeping Shane Steichen. I know it would have been a very hard move to like move on from the head coach and then you know elevate uh, the coordinator. I get it. That would have really been the best case scenario because we saw what he did with um, Jalen Hurts. And we can see what he's even doing with a wildly inconsistent Anthony Richardson. He's making it work to the best of his abilities. He almost got to the playoffs with Gardner Minshew. That's what great coaches can do. I don't think there's anyone that believes that um, Nick Sirianni would be able to get the Eagles, even with this type of roster, to the playoffs with a backup quarterback. I, I don't see it. So I don't want to say that this is a power struggle or why the Eagles kind of make the moves that they make or why they feel that pressure. It's because at the end of the day, the Eagles make moves. They take care of business. They have an unbelievable culture. They have an incredibly high standard. And they put their money where their mouth is. They just do. They make moves. They're not always trying to win the offseason. They're not trying to be in the media all the time. right? We, there's an interview every other day with Jerry Jones. I guarantee you most people outside of Philadelphia, people don't even know who the Philadelphia Eagles owner even is. Right? And except for real diehards, they probably don't even know who the GM is either. Um, they just take care of business. They make moves. They're aggressive. And at the end of the day, that really is um, what Philadelphia Eagles fans want to see. Is see you do everything you can to win. And if not, and, and if it's not working, making a change. Doing something to right that ship. That is at the heart of what Philadelphia Eagles fans want to see. And when you look at these other teams that are consistently struggling, consistently failing, the Carolina Panthers, the Tennessee Titans, the Washington Commanders, I mean, I think they started to slowly write the ship up, you know, before that, um, the Washington Commanders, the New York Giants, the Dallas Cowboys, I'm sorry, it's been a failure for what they've done. Congratulations, you won 12 games a bunch of years in a row. Congratulations, you've never been to an NFC Championship game with Dak Prescott. That is an epic failure. You tell me that Dak Prescott's a top quarterback in the NFL, well, then it's an epic failure. And you can point all the fingers of what you blame. Well, the Cowboys are not doing anything about it. They haven't done anything about it. Get a new coach. Get a new quarterback. Get new weapons. I don't know. Whatever you want to do, go do it. They don't do it, right? So we consistently see these teams fail and fail and fail, whereas, you know, a very short list of teams consistently succeed, and the Eagles are up there. And the fans know it. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about this whole power struggle? Do you think this is like a real thing? Do you think this is just kind of the media making a big deal out of nothing or just kind of like a panic after a loss? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.